It sounds like the workload of making that app must be huge. So they, they modeled Mobility Wad on Pornhub, I think, originally, because who better? Who else has got lots of videos that need like tagging and filtering and categorizing? So like, the original MWOD website, when it first got launched, was based on that. And they you just got choose, so much. Like, when, when you go stretching, you can say like Brazilian BBW. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Johnny and Youssef, welcome to the show. This is a really exciting one. Why? Because it's the first time we've got proper setups. We're not just using a potato. You're not beaning it as much as you used to. Yeah, this is HD hacks. HD potato. That's it, man. Uh, so slightly better potato. If you're not used to life hacks, we go through tools, techniques, and tactics for a productive and efficient life. And then the other two people tear it down or say that it's amazing and immediately acclaim that person as the new victor. <laughs> Uh, we'll get through whatever it is that we have chance to today, and then maybe time for some things that have been watching Netflix's stuff at the end. And as is tradition, uh, <clears throat> Johan, Sebastian, there's a hot potato for you. Caught it. What have you got? I have caught it. So my life hacks today are as a result of having done a version of 75 hard at the start of this year so if people aren't familiar with that it is a largely stupid idea where you do lots of training and drink lots of water and do lots of very difficult things for 75 days in a row and if you skip a day you have to go back to day one again so as you can imagine skipping a day is fairly bad news um so one of our friends was going to do it he did the proper version i did like a scaled back version but i ended up having to do loads of habits very consistently that i've not you know, without skipping a day. So lots of kind of efficiencies and hacks, as it were. Have you got the full list of the official 75 hard? I don't, but I, I, I'm worried that'll derail things. Okay. You know, I want to get to the to the meat. The meat. So one of the things that I did every day was uh, just take my supplements every day, which is something that we probably all do with like decent consistency. Something I found that made it really easy to do, and I'm not really sure how you two are going to react to this. I ordered some apple cider vinegar and some collagen from my protein in the form of a, like a chewy gummy. Okay. <laughs> you okay. I, I'm not, I'm not offended so, so far. Okay. It's all, all going well so far. So the, the hack I, is... I am. You just offended. <laughs> <laughs> the hack is have one supplement that you take per day that's a sweetie that's a gummy so like let's say you're going to take a multivitamin or vitamin d or something else just my protein basically make everything at this point in the form of a gummy and it's just like having sweets so what how does that help you stay compliant with the rest of your supplements it's just the standard habit formation. Multivitamin oh, gummies in Vimto flavor. That's what Yusef's got. It always right. sounds like I'm plugging my protein. Like this is this is legitimate. Like I, I tried them. They taste really nice. The apple cider vinegar and the collagen ones. I have very specific reasons for the collagen ones. The apple cider vinegar ones just sounded nice. How much? But yeah, so it's collagen just, gummies? Yeah. How much gummy do you need to eat in order to get an even close to like... How a, much gummy... Are you imagining like a big gummy that comes in a tube and you well, take I've got a, a, a tub of, of I've got a tub of collagen protein over the far side. Got it. And yeah. it's pretty big. Big. Yeah. Big. Yeah. So, so this, I think it's like a couple of hundred micrograms or milligrams. It's not very much. Right. Um, but you take one, one gummy each day. Um, to be honest, like I'm not really, the reason why I'm not taking like vitamin D or multivitamin in a gummy format is I'm not really doing it for that reason. But it's the cue habit reward loop, right? Like if I if I get to have something that tastes nice at the end, that might help. I'm, I've been really consistent with my habits. Okay, so you're taking your supplements. you're taking all of your supplements, which will probably be some creatine tablets and vitamin D and a blah blah blah. And then once you've done all of that, you get to have a nice apple cider vinegar sweetie. Exactly. I'm down for that. I don't I don't totally I, hate. I feel that. like you two haven't haven't taken that very very well. But it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm really proud of it, and it's really helped me. I, I, so I hopefully the, it'll help one other person. Yeah, the the meta habit, if you know, if it's creating or something that's going to do something, then it's a useful thing to have that you you <laughs> stick to doing every day. My what what I'm going to go away and do after this episode 
is look into is there a substantive difference between collagen and gelatin because i think they're really really similar if not the same and obviously Mm -hmm. a bag of haribo is completely gelatin based so are they rebranding haribo as a health supplement so they it has um marine collagen in the gummy fish gelatin as an ingredient yeah okay there's it but like i just to be fully clear like i'm not i'm not here saying like collagen gummies are the way to take collagen i'm not even sure if if collagen's worth bothering with it's something i wanted to try because there's some research around like joint pain when you train i thought what it, what better way to do that than have a nice sweetie at the end of my supplement routine? Yeah, I don't. I, there, I don't totally is. hate it. Okay, God, I don't tough totally. crowd. This. So yeah, okay. Christ. It's just it's, you two better be bringing some fantastic some habits here. Yeah. I, okay. Speaking of which, Yusuf, <laughs> what have you got? So you'll be pleased to know, actually, I, I've rejigged, looked through all my life hacks. I've done some analysis. I've ranked them um, and created a more kind of sophisticated classification system for them. Um, and so what I've arrived at is basically physical and digital life hacks (laughs) so in terms of the digital ones i've got a couple of iphone appy ones now some of these probably will seem obvious but it occurred to me that it, it won't be common knowledge to everyone if there's a website that you frequently want to access that doesn't have its own app you can turn it into effectively an app on your home screen So go to the website, press share. There'll be an option called share to home screen or add to home screen. Just to make a point there, share is the upward arrow poking out of the bottom of a uh, rectangle at the bottom of the screen, right? That's the one. Yep. So um, share to home screen, you can add it onto your thing and then you can select the icon. So we recommend because we're snidey and we don't have our own iPhone app, but we do have a web app and a web portal that is iPhone optimized. So if you're a member of the propane protocol, you can just save it as an app on your phone. And most people don't know the difference. Share and add to home screen. I'm all right with I, that. I, I, I do that quite a bit, actually. What have you got? What websites are you using that for? Mainly like courses we're part of. So things that I go to, like the login page a lot. Um so specific websites that you would like would find yourself like going to regularly. It's just a it's a button press and it's open and you you often you often stay logged in as well, which is quite cool. So any like if you're doing a any kind of course or I, I suppose I, it, I can't really think of any other examples. There are some apps that work as um like work as a web app. So like some diet trackers and things like that will work as, as natively. That's how they work. They don't have an iOS app. Um, yeah, that's. Really good, really good suggestion, Yusuf. Thank you for bringing that. I'm not going to make fun of it or anything. I think it was a really well thought out. We've idea. all used it. How can we? How can we take the piss out of it? Right, Johnny my one, the, mine, the my turn. Ground. Get out of the way. My turn, please. Uh, going <laughs> turn. all the way back to Life Hacks 101, you will remember that we spoke about Optimize.me with Brian Johnson. Oh, yeah. uh, what you may oh, not goodness. be aware of now is that Brian has made the entire Optimize.me library with over a 1,000 plus ones and 600 book summaries available for free. So if you go to optimize, that's O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E dot me, uh, you can sign up for free and say what you want about Brian's demeanor, right, which we've all taken the piss out of quite a lot. He put a ridiculous amount of work into that. Every book that he goes through has got a worksheet that you can use. It's got notes. It's got an audio transcript. It's got summaries. It's got um, affirmations that you can go through. And then he did those 101 masterclasses where he took the best ideas from the best books within one subject area. So sleep or mental resilience or habits or whatever. And he would take 10 different books, the best ideas from each of those, and put them into one one hour long super lecture again with worksheets and everything else and now it's available for free now the reason it's available for free is because he is trying to do a cohort-based coaching thing called heroic.us and this is the freemium front end of the funnel to get people on the mailing list but as lead magnets go this is about as high quality lead (laughs) magnet as i think you can get got an awesome partner app for ios and 
if you want to get a good book summary thing and also the masterclasses, I highly recommend just going and checking it out. Is it's for free. It's impressive. It's really, really good. I'd go as far as to say it's formidable. It's a real mature product. And it's a I mother of a lead magnet, man. Oh, you'd be annoyed if you were the person who subscribed monthly for the last eight years. Yes. And then he goes, oh, it's free now. Ah. Well, to be honest, I'm a bit annoyed. Are neither of you a bit annoyed? Did you Chris pay for probably it? never paid for I didn't yeah. pay for it. Oh, well, there we are. Story of my life, that. <laughs> I think I paid for a couple of months of it. Yeah, Interesting. you have that. access to it? So, you know, the liver king is also called Brian Johnson. And the lead singer of ACDC. Imagine if they, they made a super the, group. Well, they might be the same person. Hey, They've guys, the Brian group. here. They're all fairly impressive, aren't they? For various reasons, very different reasons, but they're all in the public eye. Yep. Mm. Brian Johnson from Optimize looks incredibly lean in the video I keep seeing of him promoting this heroic.us thing. <sighs> looks like a test tube baby. It's it's lean bordering on perhaps unwell. <laughs> isn't <God>. it? <laughs> well, he looks like a long distance runner. Yeah, he does. He does, look. which is he looks which like every, a, and someone who's done a lot of cardio. All of whom look unwell. You know, most That's triathletes true. are pretty lean people. You think, mm. God, glad I don't do that. So are you, are you two going to, are you going to get back into Optimize now? It's free. I've got That's the app. Nice. I've not opened it in a while. It's, th- this comes down to, I think we discussed this on a, a recent life hacks of book summary services in general. Things like Blinkist are kind of good adverts for the book, but they, they're never really a substitute for the full thing. I think the best mm-hmm. solution that I found or the best reason to use a book summary is that it's the prospecting, scouting mode. Do I want to give this book that a bunch of people have told me to read a shot? Oh, well, I'll dedicate 20 minutes to seeing the summary. And if that speaks to me, then I'll go out and commit time to reading the full thing, which is, you know, from a time-saving perspective, pretty good investment. A lot of value in that. Yeah, because... If, if you were to sit and read it, it would be three, four hours into it before you can really make a decision as to like, should I continue with this or not? Actually, there's two, more, like a- two more elements of why I think that might be a good idea. One is to remember points from books that you've already read and might have forgotten. And another one is to perhaps see if there's some takeaways that you missed from a book that you've read as well. So you actually, the, there is quite a bit of it, but not for probably the reason that people think. The reason people think is, oh, I don't need to read the book at all and I can just go through this summary and whatever. It's like, no, you're not going to have to. Yeah, that's a bit of an insult to the author as well. It's like, I spent all this time writing the stories and anecdotes and books to stuff to fill the book. And then you've just said, oh, it's not important. I don't need those 80,000 words. I've got this baldy guy here, this baldy (laughs) distance runner, and he's going to do it. Right, Johnny, what you got? I'm concerned that we've said this one before. And it's very similar to what we've literally just been speaking about. But it's something that I didn't use properly until this experience, this watered down 75 hard. So one of the things was reading daily. You both know how I feel about reading. I'm still on the fence about it, to be honest, about whether I've I've read enough at this point and it's what I'm still in the, the action phase. But I used... Um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for useless reaction. Readwise, <laughs> the oh, I use the Readwise app synced with my Kindle, and then say it automatically syncs and saves all the highlights to Readwise, and then gives you like the the scrolling. You you buy, both might see me share the stuff to Instagram occasionally, like ones that I find very useful. I think you do this already, Chris. You might already both do this. I probably even got it from a previous life hack, but that's the ultimate test, right? When a life hack. Comes, comes back, back around, around again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is that is that something you've both done? I pay for Readwise. Yeah, it's it's great. Like it fully. They they are such an impressive company. I'm part of their uh, developer Discord, and they they're just they integrate with all of the external brain type apps. So you can send things to your Notion, your Obsidian, Evernote, whatever. Um, and they're developing something which I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about. I'm part of the beta group but they they're developing a reader app and i think that's all i can say okay so do you use 
do you use the like the the publicly available readwise for just note taking reviewing notes you've you've made previously from the books to be honest i the reason i pay is for the reader app rather than readwise uh, main function uh so okay. i i use it just because when i highlight stuff on kindle big kindle reader i now have whatever a few thousand highlights of quotes from books and then every morning at 7 a.m i receive four of them in my email inbox and then if i want to go back and get them uh also if you've done it with books which aren't on the amazon cloud i ones that you haven't purchased but documents that you've sent to yourself which i do a lot with send to kindle you then need to plug it in but once you plug it in it will check which ones are already in the archive it won't re-add them twice it'll check those across it'll add them in um yeah it's it's an unbelievably simple and impressive way to do things and it's really good easy free content as well so every day yeah. you've got a bunch of quotes that you can just throw up on your instagram or create into a story or that just you can post on twitter i think it, it does as well apple books yeah and soon it's podcasts, with loads of stuff articles like yeah. twitter bookmarks email lists like just everything so because you see people in like the... sending stuff to readwise don't they on on twitter like in the mm. in the, the comments of a thread save threads the... or readwise or whatever yeah because the the a feature that i didn't know they did because i i started doing it and i was like oh i'm building up this like library of like interesting points from books that i realistically i would never never go back to that book and like find that quote again and then i realized you can just go through books you've read previously this might be what you meant, Chris. You can go through books you've read previously that you weren't using Readwise at the time, but you've already read, and it takes all the popular highlights from that book and sends them to your oh, Readwise. Oh, no, I wasn't aware of that. No, I didn't know that it did yeah, that. Yeah, so, so like, for, for example, like um, Atomic Habits, like I've, I've obviously read before, it just takes all the popular stuff, like all the popular quotes from that, or all the popular, most highlighted sections, That's sends cool. that to Readwise as well. So you can just build... I think it solves like the... For me, anyway, it's all like the frustrating thing about reading that it feels like you read a book and then it's just like vanishes. Away. So at least, at least you remind yourself of the stuff you've read. One of the problems that you have with reading on Kindle is that you don't have as many ways to export stuff from that that you've been learning into other programs. And I'm very, increasingly, I'm just letting the good shit stick. But just going through something, highlighting it and doing that is sweet. However, you can also do a note so this is available on Paperwhite. It's also available on um, the Oasis. So you highlight something, which is what it does. That would add it to your highlights. That would also appear on Readwise. But then you can press Note, which opens up a text box where you can add just, if you've got a thought about this, this links with this idea. Maybe this is a question that I want to have or whatever. A lot of the time people write this in the margins of books. That also appears on Readwise. So not only does the highlight, but also the prompt that you gave yourself mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. something else. About it's, why it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's pretty impressive. I'm Readwise, I'm down. People should go check it out. There might so, be a free trial. Um, it'll be linked I in the show notes below. Anyway, yeah. uh, Yousef, what you got? So this is on the same vein. <clears throat> this is for so what we've just talked about, but for physical books. So I've got a pile of physical books that people have got me as gifts or i've just picked up and you're like ah, oh, I, I really want to read it but i just can't find the justify the time to read it and then go back highlight it pull out the stuff that's relevant to me put it into my notes and so a way to solve that is an app called otter as in the animal and what you can do is it you can just set it recording with this green off on, on the side of your desk or something and as you're reading as you're highlighting, you can just speak aloud highlights or bits that you find useful. And you can leave it running in the background and it'll transcribe 660 minutes per month. So you get quite a big allowance for that. So what it does is as you read through, you'll just say occasional things aloud or sentences that you find useful. You basically don't feel like you're taking highlights because you're just speaking <laughs> as you're reading. And then it transcribes it, turns it into a document that's time stamped, and then you can export that to whatever system you use. Well, we do know that this is what Amazon Alexa and Google Home Hub and the like Apple AirPlay, that's what they're doing all the time in any case. So what they've done is they've <laughs> just given you your own personalized version of what of what everyone's smart speaker is <laughs> doing to them all the just time. Just made yeah. it useful for you rather than just for them. Yes. Crazy. Would you use yeah. that, Johnny? Would you would you just decide to record a conversation between you, Becker, and Dexter? Just as you 
trying to discipline the dog around the house. I tr- I don't really read. I'd love to read physical books. There's something nice about them, but like the there's the ones behind me on the bookshelf, and that's it. Like I don't. I would never buy a physical book. But yeah, if I suppose if I had a ton of them, um, yeah, it sounds a good idea. What's the website, good idea. Yusuf? The web, the app is called Otter. Is it no? So there's no desktop version, right? There is a desktop version as well. Yeah, so it's a web app, and you can use the M1 um, like sneaky port thing as well. What's that? What's the M1 sneaky? Port? So you can install iPad and iPhone apps on your M1 Mac, but it's they don't always work that smoothly. Oh, okay, interesting. Does it open up like a iPhone screen or an iPad screen on your phone? Yeah, on your laptop. Sorry, right. Okay, right. So I, I've got this is one that I took from Shane Parrish, which I think you will probably both agree with, but I doubt actually adhere to. Um, Shane Parrish made a point that you should always pay invoices early because the people who pay the invoices early will get preferential treatment in future. So as soon yeah. as you receive an invoice through from someone that is expecting payment, just pay it as you receive it or as soon as possible and then send them an email. All right, mate, all done. When it comes to you needing something from that person, uh, you've got a project that's on a tight timeline, you need them to go above and beyond, whatever it is, that person is going to be prepared to take it to the next level for you because they know that they're going to get paid too sweet as opposed to the person that's taken the entire whatever net 30 from the end of the month like piss yeah there's no advantage to doing that like yeah okay you get the cash flow but if you're ever going to be doing business with that person again you're playing repeated games with them like it makes sense to build a good relationship it's such a fucking good hack however didn't you get popped from the hmrc for submitting your uh, tax payment late last year yusef so <laughs> Yes, but that's, uh, that's because our trusted accountant was like... Oh, fuck, it. no, you are right. Sorry, I've <laughs> I've accused you of something that our accountant did to everybody. I think it's actually uh, HMRC's fault in this case. Oh, okay. They they had me down as a, uh, a fake doctor. What, what, when you're a real one? Well, I, I don't know if I count as one now. Were a doctor. I think you do, don't you? You still got the still got the letters in front of your name and after your name. True. I'm just not like if not someone shouted on a plane, is there a doctor on board? Oh, would you oh, go? Well, actually, no, not, not yeah, it's a very long story. How long have you got? Yeah. <laughs> so it's my, my accountant was it like, whoa, whoa, whoa mate, like there's yeah. someone having a heart attack on but the technically, plane. Technically I'm I'm doing kind of marketing strategy for <laughs> training coaches yes. at the moment. Right. So, so what what would, would you like your funnel optimizing? Right. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know. He's dying, he's dying, he's dying. But let's talk about your CPM and your click through rate. Because your lead flow is terrible at the minute. Yeah, <laughs> that's the biggest. That's the real emergency. Always pay invoices early. If you do, people are going to treat you better. Super, super simple heuristic. Everybody should adhere to it. Businesses often tend to like manage their working capital by paying things as late as they can. Like big, big businesses with huge invoices. But I definitely agree on a personal level. Like if something because especially it just creates like mental drag as well, doesn't it? Like it sits in your inbox or it sits in it, like however you receive it. And you're like, oh, I really need to do that. And there's like so much resistance around paying it when really it takes you two minutes. Yeah. It's, if you it's just the, do it and it goes away. The dude that's come around to fix the boiler or your roofing just slates and stuff. Yeah. Get it. Get it done. Yeah. Um, Johnny. I heard a. So I just off the back of that, especially interested to hear what you think about this, Chris, with because I think it's a, it's a very US thing. Um, a tip was the first time you go into a bar or a restaurant, if you're going to be in a, in a new location for a long period of time, is aggressively tip the person who helps you. So like the person who serves you at the bar or the the waiter. Yeah. Like force it. (laughs) But the example was, was tip, tip a hundred dollars. Um, the first time, because like every subsequent time you deal with that person, you'll get like preferential tables. They'll serve you first. What do you think about that as a, as a concept? In principle sounds great, but in practice, I think the, the turnover of staff is going to be so high. You know, it's that one person that's going to do it, plus maybe what the three or four people that they speak to about that dickhead that gave them a hundred bucks. So <laughs> I just don't think I don't think that it's going to pay out. And man, they are used to tipping so much out here. Some of the presets mm. when you go on, uh, <clears throat> see, they have an iPad right where they do their stuff on their side, and then they turn it over, and you are, you have to select how much you want to tip afterward. 
18, 20, and 25, it's some percent. It's got sometimes on that. So if it's a, a good sized meal, you're talking about a fair whack of a tip. And as a. And there's no option for zero, is there? Well, there is, but you'd have to edit oh, there is. custom. And then if you did do oh, zero, wow. you're in, you're in, and then they take it back, right? So you have to flip it back over and it tells them what you've done. So it's like showing, showing your homework to the you teacher. You get shamed into yeah. like, I put zero. Well, it's, it's showing your homework that says I've not done the homework. It's Doesn't as an stop. Englishman who obviously I'm genetically averse to tipping. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, maybe a, something that would work better in the UK then because people are so averse to it. So the reason I wanted Chris's opinion was I just I think he's 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 had the behind the scenes knowledge of like that sort of service based industry like does that do people respond well to stuff like that I feel like the answer is no they used to so. seeing big tips man I think a, a fair bit of the time um, yeah it's anyway. a bit of a like flex isn't it you know who can give the biggest tip and that sort of stuff so I don't do that I'll buy the, I'll buy the biggest steak but not nice give away the biggest tip what you got. Um, so this is in relation to like anything that you buy like regularly. So, um, supplements is the easiest, easiest example. So like whenever something, whenever you go down from having two of something to one of something, that's when you then order stuff, like order the new, new round of it. So like one I've had multiple zero. examples. Yeah, exactly. That's a much better way of explaining it, Yusuf. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I've had examples where like I'll be on my last version of something my last thing of something and then you're like oh, I'll, I'll i'll order it later i'll order it later and you inevitably end up three four days a week without that thing so really simple rule you can apply it to like whatever you buy on a recurring basis or you fall for what jeff bezos wants everybody to do which is the sub like subscribe and save option on amazon where it just comes monthly anyway i've not have you got any subscribe and saves i don't have a single one no. Because what level of accuracy do you need? It has to be something like contact <laughs> lenses where you need, yeah. you know, you will put it, you, you need, you, you wake up and you're like, I know that I will need eyesight today. So I will definitely yeah. use my contact lenses. But if it's even toothpaste, the variance can end up with like a massive backlog after a year. Of yeah, toothpaste. You, have a, you have a month where your grip strength increased a little <laughs> bit and you've just been <laughs> pumping through it. Yeah, I am. Um, so having a buffer level of products that you use is a really smart idea. Uh, or... Who would be another one would be to have a uh, always in one cupboard um, like buffer level that you touch. So you go into that one whenever you, you're running out of the other stuff and then you work on top of it. So rather than swapping between oh, the two, nice. you've just got one that's always the buffer level. You that must do that like a toilet floating. Roll. That's. You, oh, yes, that's true. You need to have a toilet roll. But then there's a bunch of downstream. <laughs> Kitchen roll is a valid alternative. Tissues are a valid alternative. And then if that doesn't work, socks. So, you know, there are there is a hierarchy socks. here of That's a real emergency like running on fumes, isn't it? Yeah, that's second year <laughs> second year university living in the first house that you've ever lived in shit. <laughs> mate, mate, have you used all the toilet roll, mate? Have you socks? used all the socks, mate? <laughs> Right, you said what yeah, you got. That's it. Have a have a buffer level and order in it. Well, one is a new zero. Nice. That's good. Um, so this is a digital one. Also, iPhone. Like, you guys might just be like, oh, well, yeah, obviously. But moving between apps with any iPhone that's above a nine or a ten. So, if you don't have the button, rather than like swiping up because i've seen so many people do this where they they swipe up and then like find the new app on the home screen and then press it again you like you can just move between them by putting your thumb on the little white bar and moving left and right so that one it's almost that that one I've so used, obvious that you forget about it that one i've used a lot something that i used to do with a button that i haven't brought back across onto the new buttonless iphones you remember when you used to double tap and then be able to move between them Oh, yeah. You would be able to see them all. Now, you can do that if you go from the bottom slowly and it'll and open out into all of the windows. That's just a, a function that I've never been able to, whatever, instantiate into my, my brain's movement pattern. Do you miss the button? Not really. Is that so not what you were referring to, Yusuf? That what, you, what Chris has just so described? The, so I'll like so push, push it up a little bit and then swipe across to go between apps. 
so you can just you can do it without pushing up and then it just goes straight to the next app or what chris is describing is it like puts them all into a floating panel and then you can you can choose um yeah yeah so, so go but if you go back down to one of the apps and then if you just go across the very bottom of the screen and you swipe your thumb from left to right my god i didn't know that oh, oh so that's, that's the one indicated so that's that, the, and that was, he was me saying like, oh, this is so obvious that I I, I thought you meant the like the push it up, bump it into like a carousel, and then go between. No, uh, no, no. Well, this is the this I'm, is the mother because you're usually going between two <laughs> apps, right? It's rare that you're going between. It's rarer that you're going between three. It's like, oh, here's a here's an address, copying it oh, from my calendar. Pay, yeah, doing yeah. whatever the fuck into Uber or something. That's the thing it. that's better about the new like the new iPhone setup where it's all in the the app. Um, directory or whatever they call it where i just search now i just like drag down and search yeah. for the name of the app rather than like having to deal with the home screen i think that's a way like it, it's better for like a screen time perspective so you don't get caught in the loop yeah. of email instagram facebook it's whatsapp like I'm going in choosing exactly what i want yeah this is what i came here to yeah. do it's the alfred of iphone <laughs> yeah it is uh right okay this is one that i've been doing for the last few years so i've been traveling a lot up until covid and then after covid as well I guess I've been traveling a fair bit as well. And I did it uh, on the first road trip I did around America a few years ago and then have just done it ever since. I've bought a particular fragrance for each trip. So I've done a little bit of research. I have a bunch of friends that are fairly knowledgeable in aftershaves. And I'll ask them, look, man, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. What do you think? And I'll then go into Phoenix or somewhere into a department store, try them and then pick one, and that'll be the aftershave that I have for the trip, and then usually, whatever, the six months, 12 months or something after the trip, obviously. But what it means is that whenever I put that fragrance back on, I've got all of these memories attached to that smell, and it reminds me of that 4th of July in Nashville or that trip to Austin or whatever it is, Uh, and it's just great. And now I've got little bits left of each one of them, and if I ever want to remind myself about that trip, I can just wear that, and it gives me nice memories. That is really nice. That is lovely. It's crazy how much like a, a memory is attached to smell. Like when you put a, a, an aftershave on and it like takes you back like five, ten years. Have you ever met a girl who wears the same perfume as like one of your exes? Yes. And it's it's yes. just instantly it's like... strange. <laughs> so in my like in my induction in accountancy in like the first week, they you they're given like a presentation about like what tie to wear to match the shape of your face and all that sort of stuff. And one of the things they said was like, we recommend not wearing any perfume aftershave in case it creates like the wrong environment between you and a client and you can't like undo it. Like once, once you've gone in and you like smell of their smell of their partner or smell of their ex-partner, <laughs> that's it. Like that, yeah. they'll, they'll associate you the deal with that. Lost, isn't you it? can't, yeah, you can't unpick that. So oh, it's very wow. powerful. That's, yeah. yeah that's what's funny. the, what what's was the number one, aftershave that you've bought like what's the if you've got friends who have knowledge with their stuff like what's what's your number one ranked aftershave uh so maison kurdijan uh baccarat ruse 540 it is <laughs> it is a. Uh, it's an app so just put baccarat rouge 540 in on uh google and it'll come up it is without a doubt one of the best smelling things that i've ever i've ever smelled in my entire life it's unbelievable wow uh it's a unisex technically um although it would be fairly strong i think if you were a girl to wear it but it's just outstanding like it just it's pure happiness and it lasts for eight hours um so the guy who is the um whatever it is perfumer for um a bunch of big current fragrance houses he does the stuff for them. So he'll go and do whatever, Home Sport. And what was that blue one that had the, the sailor's uh, torso? Blue jeans. Oh, uh, the, with, with the stripes. Um, it wasn't Versace, was it? That was a, a 90s cost, Lacoste. No, no, it wasn't. Anyway, that one that every guy had for a short amount of time. He was the guy that designed that. He's designed some of the biggest fragrances. And uh, Maison Kurdijan is his private perfume house where he just does stuff for himself so this is kind of like i don't know pretty legit then <laughs> yeah a, a producer for all of the big r&b artists then deciding that he's going to start making his own stuff and it's it's pretty expensive i think a bottle is maybe about a normal 70 mil bottle is maybe 250 300 pounds but you don't need that much of it it'll last you a year and it smells that i you can't really put a price on 
like feeling nice. How many squirts do you use? Uh, usually four. So like four squirts. Two, wow. Two, two, two wrist, on wrist, 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 neck, neck. Done. Yeah. Nice. I bet Yusuf. I imagine you make sure it doesn't touch your skin because of estrogen. So since I spoke to right? Anthony J, he advised doing that. Yeah. I used to be I a always think about spray that. on the neck. Nice. Um, but now I just use a, a dab of essential oil, which Mike finds hilarious. Like I was on my Where way out. Where do you put the essential oil? Sandalwood, just on the top of my head. And he was like, did you just put a drop of oil on your head? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so you're walking around honking of sandalwood or lavender or something. Yeah, just some kind of herb. <laughs> Very herby. But that's Rosemary. your musk, isn't it? As as somebody from Egypt, that's the... It's the smell of natural, my people. I, to be honest, Arabs for all of their faults, smell lovely. <laughs> they do, you're right. They do. It's very good sure. smell, Habibi. Oh, don't worry, Habibi. It's good for you. Yeah. Jean-Paul Gaultier. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Fucking Jean-Paul Gaultier. Thank you. Feels good, that, doesn't it, to get it, get it out of the system. Uh, do you know what, the, what I think the hormone is, or the uh, neurotransmitter that's released when you connect something that's like that, where you solve a problem? Vasopressin. Could I be right? You said probably, yeah. It's, it's it's associated with memory and short-term memory, so it's probably like the reward for yep. Ah, oh, connected. Yeah, tip of my tongue. Yeah. Mission complete. Bit of vasopressin. Get in. So Tim Ferriss used to get intranasal vasopressin spray to learn Japanese vocabulary. It's a Why? very Tim Ferriss thing to do because it gives you a short-term uh, improvement in your memory. Oh fuck! I'm taking a big I line of memory. Probably feels quite yeah. nice. Like a little bit of like, get in in the morning. <laughs> Remembering everything. Right, Johnny, what you got? Uh, mine is a Mac app that is connected to a concept that is also linked to Tim Ferriss called Morning Pages. Have you heard of that before? Uh, is that the Artist's Way thing? from Julian Yeah, exactly. Cameron? Yeah. So it's a form of journaling, the idea being like you... Well, the, the the artist's way concept is you write for three pages a day of just unfiltered, like whatever you're thinking. And it's supposed to be like a form of therapy, basically. You know, you like get all of your thoughts out and it just is a, a way of sort of processing um, things that you're, that you're like dealing with or trying to think about that you wouldn't necessarily have that conversation out loud, as it were, but writing it out can help process that. Morning Pages is a because my handwriting looks like a, an eight-year-old's. Mm. Morning Pages is a way of doing it digitally, and it's an app that is designed that gives you um, a daily word uh, target, and it analyzes the tone of the writing, to ha- whether it has a negative or a, or a positive um, like frame to it. And then it also pulls out themes that keep occurring in the... Um, in Jesus the, in the, Christ. I know, I'm excited about that part. It's really much. cool. This is so, so like, sophisticated. Yeah, so it, it, you can see like January had like a negative, like it's a red bar below a line. February had a positive tone. And like these were the things you were talking about on days you were, it, it had a negative tone. These are the things you're talking about on days you had a, a positive tone. There's so much tone. that can be done with that. Because if, if when you log in, it says like, what's your mood out of 10? Or how did you sleep? Or something like that. And it starts drawing cross correlations and associating it with different themes. Then it starts to get really exciting. It's more just, it's weird how like, um, the the strangest thing is how uh, you look back on an entry and you're like, God, like I have no emotional reaction to that whatsoever any, anymore. But at the time, it was like really Completely a really heightened consuming. emotional thing. And also how consistent, like certain things that annoy you, crop up that you that like I certainly wasn't aware of. Like you think it, oh, this things happened today and that's a frustrating thing, but actually it happened in January as well. <laughs> So and you think it's like this one-off event. Have you ever looked back on notes from, say, two years ago, and you see something that annoyed you at the time, and you think, oh, like, it just doesn't bother me anymore. That's always yeah. a nice a nice win. It's a sign of progress, isn't it, I think? I've always said it would be great if you could take a screenshot of your memory. So if you could go back, you know how Time Machine on your MacBook works, and you can go back and restore your machine to an older version. If you could just visit an older version of your the the texture of your mind, right? And if you were to go back to it three years ago and think about the neuroses and the anxieties and the concerns and the worries and the things that consumed you, almost all of them would probably not even feature in your mind now. Your problems are more sophisticated, bigger. That's true. 
more resilient. It'd be so frustrating though, wouldn't it? Because you'd you'd be shouting at it, being like, "Stop yeah. doing that!" or "Stop worrying about this!" and you couldn't communicate with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yep. think that's the so this uh, one of the other things is journaling, right? So like I've tried that was one of the other things I had to do daily, and I've tried like the six minute diary, the five minute journal, like lots of other ways of of journaling, and I don't. I, I think the only way that I've tried that I felt like a even like an immediate benefit from so like as soon as i finished i was like oh like that feels better to like get that out of my head was was this this way of doing it and there's no like structure to it so it feel it can feel a bit pointless sometimes if you're like i just need to get on with my day but it's it, the value of looking back at, at previous entries and being like wow like that problem is firstly i handled it really well i was worried about it and i handled it really well or it's not really a thing anymore um, and you can pick out stuff that makes you happy as well that you don't realize, like things that happen in a day that, and obviously add those back in so, more and more. So yeah, it's cool. What What's the website? Is there a it's desktop version? Yeah, it's a desktop it's a desktop app called Morning Pages. Okay. I should say Mac. as well that if this has passed the Johnny test, who is definitely the the most skeptical of journaling among the three of us, then it's got to be good. It's a high watermark, yeah, for you to do that. And then how much do you have to write? You can set that. How much do you choose to write? I have it on 250 words, I believe, a day. Yeah, because I think the original Artist's Way by Julia Cameron is three full pages written. It is, yeah. yeah which is, it is. That was, that's one of the main reasons that I've never done it. Because I just think, oh, that's such a, a huge barrier to get over. Uh, yeah, so exactly. So that would, that would take me, well, I don't, I've never actually tried Probably it. Probably half an hour. A while. Yeah. yeah. And I think like with this stuff, it's, it is all about like keeping the resistance low and doing it consistently. So like you, I had the thought of like, it'd be cool to try. I've heard quite a few people who I like look up to you talk about it. Mm-hmm. But this idea of like sitting down with a little book each morning and writing, mm-hmm. like my handwriting so bad that when, I, I want to be able to look back on it and read it firstly. It's, and, it's illegible even to you. Yeah, so like it's it's scroll two days later. So what's the point? Like, yeah. So uh, like over the last couple of years in hospital, quite a lot of stuff is still physically written. So we're not fully digital, and you get so frustrated at writing because when you're used to typing really fast, and then you're like, oh my god, I have to like scroll this out, and it, it it's annoying because of the friction to mm, you're so used to being able to have like, smooth flow from brain to output. Yeah, Yusuf, what you got? Physical one. I, I posted this on Twitter yesterday and people went nuts over it, like people missing the point and getting annoyed at it. But what I said was potatoes for cutting, rice for bulking. And if everyone just followed that rule, we'd all be fine. And people in the comments being like, oh, well, but it all turns to starch and sugar anyway. So, or like, well, I could eat loads of McDonald's fries. And you're like, well, yeah, obviously, but that's not the point, is it? Like, the point is, Try and overeat boiled potato and get back to me. But that sounds like a shit meal. So what else can you do with potato? The I think when you're dieting, you want to make food as boring as possible. Like I think what a lot of people, and it's a big mistake that a lot of the kind of eating disorder fueled Instagram influencers do is they they really pedestalize and worship food and make it super... Like it's it's almost like they're just blue balling themselves with food when really you shouldn't you should be making it as unpalatable and boring as possible and as filling as possible. You could mix it with the uh, chicken in a tin, Chris. With chicken with white rice, chunky chicken. Yeah, the, you know the <laughs> white chicken. You yeah, in, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Uh, so your argument here is that potatoes are less dense in terms of their. <laughs> They're, you know, they're less calorie dense. So on yep. the satiety index, somebody did a study where they, they ranked foods from um, all different types of, of foods and, and related it to 100 calories of sliced white bread. <laughs> and so it gives it an index of what was the how many calories did someone eat subsequent to eating 100 calories of X food and potato, boiled potato was the highest one. So it was people ate the least after eating potato and i think the lowest one was like crisps or croissant like something like really almost like wafer air but really high calorie density garlic bread oh, i yes. i would say 
vessel for butter. If you were to give me the difference between like a super low fat spread of some kind on a nice baked potato, a nice jacket, right, that's been cross cut and been put in and it's it's just a tiny little bit overdone, not much, but a tiny mm. little bit overdone just so the skin dude. That versus a boiled potato and it's the same. It's still a potato, low fat some something on top. Oh, I'm I'm fine with that. Like it's it's when people say like, oh, what about McDonald's fries? They're like, well, that's not really potato. That that's just like palm oil or whatever used with potato as a vessel for it, mm. <laughs> with <laughs> quite questionable amounts of potato as well. It might might not even be potato. It might be some kind of plastic polymer that they've melted down and pushed Cold through. It. It's just estrogen, isn't it? Everything it's just, yeah, is estrogen. Pure. <laughs> it just identifies as potato. No one can question that these days. So used to be used to be just... a potato that now identifies as some estrogen. And you heard about the hundred percent beef scandal. What's that? Just before so, we move on, j- hold on. I, my issue was with the rice piece of this. <laughs> just because I feel like the, the beef will move us off the subject and I want to okay. get to the bottom of it. Potato for cutting, I agree. But rice for bulking. Rice, it's just the, the bodybuilder staple, isn't it? But I, like, I find rice really filling. Is it like you, you put a small serving of rice in a pan and, and cook it, it expands. It's a huge meal, really, for the calories, don't you think? Like, why not, like... Buttery we should, potato we, for both. We should do a challenge for YouTube. Like we'll. But it we'll, depends. Like how you. How, what's a better base? Buttery biscuit base. What's a better base for carbohydrates for you to add into a meal? Unless you're going to go pasta, which is then you're playing around. You're fucking about with gluten. What? What? What do you? What beats rice? This is Johnny's an absolute sandwich boy. So like. Oh, so, uh, he just wants everything to be a Marks and Spencers. <laughs> to be honest taste of the world <laughs> fucking whatever so, it is all day breakfast or something i suppose if i was managing johnny's bulk i would i would have to say like do you know what just go to town on sandwiches because you wouldn't even need to you, tell me well you're in your element there aren't you yeah, so yeah. Chris that is his how, native environment it doesn't matter where we're going who we're going to see what we're going to do i'm most excited about the mns simply food on the way the opportunity <laughs> to do sandwiches <laughs> on our way on our way to see bring me the horizon guest list play a huge arena. <laughs> what are you most excited for tonight, Johnny? Oh, well, I do think that M&S have just released their new Simply Food range, which has actually got like a prawn something something. Let, let me check if weather, what time Weatherby closes, Chris, because <laughs> that's going to determine really, what time we set off. really concerned off, that the, yeah. the meal deal might have finished by then. What's the beef? What happened with beef? Oh, so there was some kind of scandal where McDonald's were saying on, on, on their like wall placards, 100% beef in their burgers and what had happened was they acquired a subsidiary company that was called 100 percent beef <sighs> limited oh my god <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my god and they got into some kind of lawsuit and had to change the thing because it was obviously a, a false claim but misleading. they were they, they tried to argue misleading. well yeah it's technically correct because because burgers have like carbs in them don't they they have like filler ingredient that actually makes the carb and, count like back, I remember separated. back in the keto days, having a burger and looking like, oh, that, that's it. 30 grams of carbs. You had to order your burgers from a special place, didn't you? To yeah. Not has, anyone to thought, has anyone thought about starting up a uh, sports massage therapy business called Not a Rapist? <laughs> I mean, I don't think you'd get any customers if you called it that. But well, why? Yeah, I'd Surely you business. have to get more customers than a rapist next door. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not between like that's not the two options <laughs> yeah there are other people in the market that's the trouble well that's, that's what you strategy. think that's what you well, think that's that, what they want you I, to believe yeah like, what what would you choose if there was two doors and you're between like, oh. a rapist and not a rapist <laughs> <laughs> that's like it's one of those mind games isn't it where like you can only ask one one question there's two people standing in front of two doors which yeah. one do you go one through? always lies one always rapes <laughs> yeah <laughs> Right. Okay. Moving on. Um, so I got I got a bit of I got a bit of pushback on my newsletter this week for putting this in, uh, but I don't care. Twelve uh, foot dot io. So that's number one, number two, ft dot io. So this person that has made this website realized that in order for websites to be optimized for Google ad uh, keyword search, they have to actually make a completely unpaywalled version of every article that's paywalled so that Google can search it 
without the paywall. And he has made this website, 12foot.io, uh, saying, show me a 10-foot paywall and I'll give you a 12-foot ladder. And this <laughs> unlocks any, pretty much any paywall. So the Observer, the Spectator, the Guardian, New York Times, Washington Post, uh, and you can just append to the beginning https colon backslash backslash 12 foot dot website i think it explains it on the on the website anyway how to do it plus there's an ios and an android app that's partnered up with it and it's completely free journalists hate him is it all is it also not completely illegal well what would be illegal about it that's that um google uh keyword search Mm. is available for google to access and presumably... so they're just finding a version that exists on the internet like it's not bypassing the paywall precisely yeah right. this is just a different okay. way to view it now don't get me wrong uh i think that journalists the ones that are good people like douglas murray should be paid for their work uh however if you don't like a journal if you want to hate read them uh <laughs> this is a good way to do it someone complained about the fact that um it didn't work on my website I'm like, I don't have any paywalled content on my website. So there's nothing, nothing there's to... There's no secret. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Uh, that being said, please do support whatever publications you actually care about and use this for the ones that you hate read. Interestingly, the thing that stops me from... Sign, you know, someone sends you a Financial Times article or something from The Independent or whatever, and you want to read it. The thing that stops... Like, if it just had Apple Pay and it was 50p or whatever, I'd 100% what, just for do a, it. For a one-off um, payment yeah. for the article? Yeah, it's, that would be a really, really smart thing to do. Like, it's not the it's not the money that's the problem for me. It's the ball ache of like Friction. you have to type in your email address and then check the card. thing. And yeah, yeah, Apple Pay would fix everything. Johnny, uh, this one is another app. Um, might have spoken to you about this before, Chris, but you might. So, Chris years ago referred me on to a meditation coach called Brian who introduced me to Shinzen Young. Yep. And there's a huge PDF. And like he has a book. And his, his method's decently complicated. I think that's fair to say. Like It's not just sit and pay attention to your nose and, um, <clears throat> and focus on your breath. And it's not like headspace. Um, there's a lot to it. And I've, I've often struggled to like piece it all together to understand it. There is actually an app for all of this now. Don't know whether you've come across this before, Chris. No. So Shinzen Young's method is basically broken down into a course on an app that is progressive and systematic and takes you through all of the methods with guidance. You can take, the, it's everything from like a five minute meditation through to an hour meditation. The app is called Bright Mind. And it is... Bloody uh, hell. I, be- <laughs> I believe it was originally Shinzen who was doing the like the, the guided meditations. It's now somebody else. Is he still alive? Um, as far as I know. Yeah, as far it's as getting I know. on, isn't he? So, does Bright Mind follow the five ways framework? Mm-hmm. Oh, what well, with the concentration, clarity, equanimity. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is very good. The, the, the thing I like the most about it, which is a weird, like, obviously, I've, so I've completed the course. It was really, really helpful. Um, but you know, when someone says, like, I quite want to get into meditation, like, what, what, what would you recommend? And you're like, well, probably not Headspace, probably not Calm, like maybe here's a youtube video like to just be able to say that's an entire like a to z course that explains the entire thing from the very basics through to like the really advanced take from it what you want how Um, long did it take you to complete the full course it's chunky that's not an answer it's i I don't even know the answer that's the trouble there'll be six months uh there'll probably be like it's probably one to two months of like one meditation Daily. a day, yeah, and then they're they're always adding stuff. But like to learn the method, the five ways method, um, it's at least daily. Are for... there lectures to teach you the theory outside of the yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dude, and that's then great. There's, there's separate, like, and it like tracks all your meditation as well, so like it keeps your streaks and your time and all that sort of stuff. Well, we um, um, and the... sorry, I think everybody Go that's on. that's read that five ways to know yourself. If you're interested in this, if you just Google five ways to know yourself, Shinzen Young. Um, there's a PDF which is available for free. It'll be the top uh, result on Google. Uh, and just have a read of that. And that is the most comprehensive breakdown of... Is it my, It's mindfulness meditation, right, Yusuf? 
Yeah, the yeah. pass and the... Yeah, it's the most easy to understand breakdown. Three different modes, three different senses, and a matrix, basically, that runs over the top. It's super easy. Very good because so, it's systematic. It's like for an engineer's mind, it's it's mm-hmm. not... There's no woo-woo. It's non-denominational. It's just, here's what to do. Go and explore it. There's the... the that stuff, so like the labeling, the noting, is actually part of an even bigger system that includes other forms of meditation. And the final lecture is like how to design your own like training plan for the week. So like how to take all the methods we've spoken about and like Mondays you might do this, Tuesdays you might do this. And this if you want to get a coach, this is why you should get a coach and this is the benefits you should look for. And if you want to go on retreats, these are some recommendations for retreats. Like it it is the closest thing I've come across to just like here is how ha- here's how to do meditating. Now you now you know everything wow. you need to know. How it's really, cool. really cool. What is your current meditation practice having completed that course? So I do like a like push pull legs, basically. <laughs> so uh like you'll be familiar with this, Chris. You know, there's like focus in, yep. focus out. Yeah. So I'll do one day of focus in, see here, feel, focus in. Yeah. The next day is see here, feel, focus out. Yeah. And then the third day is in and out, see, yep. here, feel, and then back to the beginning again. Sometimes on the fourth day, I'll do focus on rest or focus yep. on, like he has nurture positive and all these other things as well. Auto focus, which is where you do nothing and let sensations come and go. Yeah, the do nothing, the the whatever it is uh, positive, where you ding the bell and think about it and then let it reverberate. Mm-hmm. That yep. All of that stuff, it's really cool. And for the people that are listening that are into their meditation and are thinking that they want to maybe try and give this a a, a shot, uh, I would highly, highly recommend it. I would also highly recommend maybe thinking about getting a coach if you enjoy yeah. that because it is it can get a little bit complex without somebody to explain it. But yeah. so the I think if you if you're like into training and you follow a training plan or you're you're like that way inclined, this I think will probably sit well with you because it's structured in a very similar way. Um, and the app will guide you through the basics. And if you listen to anything, I still don't really get it. They recommend coaches as well. So. Very nice. Yusef. It's awesome. Nice. Do you want physical or digital? Physical. Physical. Yeah, I want a physical one, please. Learn to roll. So this is just a simple thing that I think a lot of people have never learned. And it's a great way to improve your physical confidence, to just reduce the risk of injury. It's so versatile and it's such an easy entry grade skill to learn. I think if you have done gymnastics as a child or if you're used to doing that kind of stuff, you would naturally like roll out of a fall, forward, backwards, sideways. But being able to do it just means that you're no longer afraid of just stacking it. And you you often will see people on YouTube on like fails compilations and stuff. And they are what our friend David describes as leptosomes, like someone who is just completely physically unintelligent and just manages to like make a a big hen's dinner of a simple fall. Whereas if you know how to roll, you can avoid that. It's the same principle as have you ever seen people who like they're squatting a weight that they've not they're not confident with the weight. And so they just cut the depth because they know that if they fail it, they're not going to know how to dump the bar. Whereas if you go in, you know how to fail the squat properly, you know how to dump it and jump forward or put it on the the pins or whatever, then you can commit to full depth because if you fail, it's fine. So it's the same principle. I like it. It's weird that we do that as kids and your proprioception of playing around on the ground and crawling about and jumping and stuff like that is so good. And then you get to adulthood and you're like, oh, no, but emails, I've got them too. <laughs> um, and it just gets always in the no, way. but emails. There's, uh, if you have a- Aaron Alexander, my buddy that does the Align podcast, he's got this thing where um, he says every adult should be able to get up from the ground without using their hands. Uh, he's got this like, classic test. Oh, there was the challenge going around recently where you put the, you're lying on your front and you've got. That's different. Yeah, that's, that's hard. That's, what, yeah, that's very difficult. What position are you in to start off with that you have to get you, off? Oh, you could work, be on your back. You could test. be on your back. So you could just sort of roll your feet forward and then roll yourself oh, up okay. and stand up, which would be pretty easy. But generally, you know, that requires a good bit of momentum. You need to be able to have some pretty good uh, mobility in your ankles. If you were to start on your front and weren't allowed to change from your front 
uh, but still couldn't use your hands. If you don't have a broomstick pinning your hands, like your arms behind your back, that's a little bit easier. Um, have you seen that one? What's that thing where do people have to pick a a cereal box up off the floor or something? Or a piece oh, of that's, that's, that's a party floor? game that I, I always win. <laughs> because you can yeah. do box, you can basically do the splits. Yeah, you can just pull yeah. the pancake splits. down. Yeah. Cheating. That, it's yeah. Called. What was I going to say? The rolling. It's oh, it was. It was just like if you ever watch a toddler do a back squat. Like if you ever watch a toddler like go to pick something up, they just drop into Bonk. like a. Yeah, they just look like a like a professional weightlifter. Just drop into this like knees over their toes. Who's everything that, uh, perfectly aligned? Who's that Japanese weightlifter, not powerlifter? I know Toshi you Toshikis, dude. Like a seventy kilo guy, bone lean. Zahim. Oh, that's no, 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 no. Oh. The, the dude I'm on about is like a one. He's like a 105 guy, oh, ridiculous know. squatter. Um, I'm pretty sure I showed they, you a video. Of, yeah, they've just been bred for it, haven't they? Like how yeah. close to a billion people, they just like sift through them until they find someone with the perfect <laughs> female length, and they're like, right, you Squat are going is. in the camp. And okay, uh, right. So my one is. Uh, this was something that both Aaron and me uh, came upon, but I realized it while I was spending a good bit of time in airports towards the back end of last year. Walk around the airport while waiting for your flight. So a lot of the time you arrive at an airport early, you're going to be sat waiting for departure to go. I mean, first off, as a hack, you do not need to be at the gate unless you are on uh, first or business class or some sort of preferential thing at the front until they say last call. Last call, when you actually arrive, is just when they're starting to put probably the normal groups in. And you're probably group five and group three is about to go through. Now, obviously, I'm not liable if you end up getting stranded in some foreign country. <laughs> but my point is, <clears throat> don't stand up when they say anybody that's in, that like you can start lining up now. You don't need to do that. Also, just do laps of the airport. Airports are pretty interesting places. There's interesting people and stuff happening. And <clears throat> you can easily get... I got my full day's 10,000 steps in having a flight at 7 a.m. that I arrived for at 5.30 and just did laps and laps of Austin Airport. And then before I got on the plane, I was like, I've done my day's steps. I'm wow. going to be in the air for the rest of the day and I've still done my day's steps. It's It gives you something to do as well because it's sitting nervously like, oh, when, when do I get up? And mm. like, you just feel rubbish when you on the plane. Whereas, yeah, if you've done a load of steps, you'd be like, oh, I've actually done something useful. It's the it's when they say like, you know, you can start leaving the aircraft and everybody just goes mental. <laughs> that is my it's my <laughs> least. They stand up like that. They, yeah, they don't even you know, say like, that. It's as soon as you hear, boom. Oh, the seatbelt signs off. Yeah. yeah, it's like the starter pistol. It's like we're all gonna get off the plane, guys. Like you're not gonna be trapped on the plane. It'll all be all right. Just sit back down. But yeah, have a walk around, get some steps in. Uh, also, obviously, a lot of places that you can do couch stretch, other bits and pieces to try and loosen you off before you want to get on, if you want to do a little bit of stretching or mobility. Uh, and hydrate as well. Like, I think that that's the, one of the main impacts that you get from flying on a plane. Uh, also, always have a bottle of water with you. So just buy a bottle of water, whatever, before you leave. And then just when the lady comes around filling up, because she'll take a very large two-litre bottle put that into a small plastic cup and give you that. And you'll say, actually, would you just mind filling up my bottle with your bottle? Stay hydrated. <laughs> Decant. You know? Decant. Decant. Just don't buy the bottle before security. Decant. Alan, you can't. <laughs> There's no need to say that. Right, Johnny, what you got? Uh, so for any, any long-term any long time listeners of modern wisdom they'll know of life hacks specifically they'll know that i've been on a a mobility journey so loved romwad was told not to do romwad got very upset tried doing romwad again didn't really work injured my hamstring have tried kelly Starrett stuff on and off didn't really like the app didn't really like the interface have tried doing no mobility go wad as well you tried go wad yeah tried go wad but that, in fact yeah god i tried that for ages um i think i've found the app 
and I've kind of meant I have mentioned it before, but this is the upgraded version. And it is. Does anyone, do you want to guess? Run what? No. Oh. Yusuf? Is there something we'll have heard of? Mm-hmm. Knees of a Toes guy? I, I don't even know who that is. Oh. Ben Patrick. Is it the ABSS, the Kit Lachlan new Also, product? no. 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 It, is, it is Kelly Starrett's new app. Okay. Is this, <laughs> is this the ready state? Is this his new one? It is, yeah. So he, he brought out a version of the ready state, which felt very much like a web app that someone had saved to their desktop um the latest one like you open the app and it says to you um so firstly there's a mobility test which is cool that kelly's never done before so you quantify your mobility it's a fairly hard test to pass i scored pretty pretty poorly on it um <laughs> <laughs> um there's just so much in there and it filters it for you so uh, look, there's a, an opening screen that says like what would you like to do today so like do you want to work on a specific body part do you want to prep for a movement or a sport do you want to just do the daily maintenance um, or do you want to do the mobility test again? Filter you can filter by time, filter by area, filter by pain, filter by thing you're going to do, filter by thing you're going to recover from. So just open the app and just do like a ten minute thing. Like oh, I'm doing barbell row later. I'll do. I'll work on my shoulder. Press, press, press. And they're all follow along as well. They didn't used to be follow along. It used to be Kelly going like, just get this and do this <laughs> couch stretch. Whereas now he like walks through the entire thing. So. As a as a like one stop shop for I want to improve my mobility. I've not found. I'm sure someone will tell me it's a better thing, but I've not found anything better than that. Well, like, it just it sounds like the workload of making that app must be huge. So they they modelled um, mobility wad on Pornhub, I think originally because like who better to to model like who else has got lots of videos that need like tagging and filtering and categorizing. So like, the original M wad website when it first got launched was based on that. And they you just can got choose, so much. like when when you go stretching, you can say like Brazilian BBW. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly that. Just a spice of mobility. I have I have questions. Questions. Can it be done at home? <laughs> yes. How much equipment do you need? You can filter by equipment, Chris. Okay, so if you don't have a lacrosse oh, ball or yeah. a foam roller or a. Mm-hmm. So like, let's say you're traveling. Let's say you're in a hotel and you haven't got anything, and you've only got 15 minutes. No problem. You say 15 minutes, no equipment, and like the specific body part you want to work on, and it'll it'll give you a recommendation. Oh, nice. So it's kind of like pressing the random button on Netflix a little bit, because presumably there's a bunch of different things that it could come up with that it would give you. Yeah, so it'll give you like a standard, it'll give you the daily maintenance as a, a, as a default, which is like the standard programming that happens every day. But before you get to that, you can say, well, actually, like my lower back hurts today. My lower back hurts. I've got 20 minutes. I've got a foam roller. What can I do? And it gives you like three or four videos to pick from. And then you just follow along and do that. And it gives you a streak, a score. Um, and you can test to see whether it's working over time by consistently doing the mobility test. Are you more so, mobile? I, so... I don't. I really don't want to say this because it's going to jinx it. And I'm going to go deadlift after this and ping my knee or something. But this is the longest period of time I have been not injured for. I am uninjured <laughs> for, while training heavily, we will consistently. Pray to the injury gods that that continues. But I like it. I like it. Great the re- work. And that's Callum. just the ready state. The ready state on the iOS. <laughs> Uh, app store I, I never know whether it's available for android there no is a web cares. website login version as well it's not a web app it's a you can log into the same back end very nice you've um, got the the comprehensive meditation and stretching apps now with your journaling as well this is one hell of a morning routine. journaling yeah no, no. uh Yusef, yeah. what you got this is my latest silly game that i've found myself getting addicted to uh-oh um if you if you know me, you'll know that when I when I go through stressful periods, my defense mechanism is to regress to a simpler time in my life and get addicted to some stupid little game on my phone. Um, so my previous terrible addiction was Mortal Kombat, which I had to go cold turkey. Mortal Kombat Mobile, I should say, which is just like button mashing. And I spent lots of money on buying new souls and upgrading the characters. Um, this one is cool. It's much simpler. It's much nicer. And I would recommend it. It's not a toxic addiction. It's called water sort puzzle, or as I call it with with my partner, tubes. And it's it's basically a set of 
tubes with different color paint in them, like different colors above the thing. And you have one empty tube and you have to pour bits of the colors into the empty tube and rearrange them so that you have each tube has a single color. And it's just a very simple but challenging puzzle. The great thing about this is that you know it, it's rate limited, so you can't get addicted to it. And if you put your phone on airplane mode, you skip all the adverts. Um, Why is it rate limited? Because it's not the kind of thing that you can just endlessly play. Because, well, I mean, you, you could, but it's not like, I feel like a lot of the more complex games, like, I don't know if you've, if you guys played like PS5 or something recently, where it's yeah. changed so much in dynamic from when back in our day, when we would play like Metal Gear Solid on like a PS1, where it's just actual gameplay and cutscenes and it was quite wholesome. Whereas now it feels like everything's just microtransactions and just trying to like tap into your dopamine. It's not really a game experience. It's more of a like, how can they extract as much money or keep you on the screen as long as possible? And I feel like it's a bit of a toxic trend in gaming. Whereas this is just pure and wholesome. Good old fashioned water sort puzzle. (laughs) So I, I play, I play a bit of Warzone. I play a bit of Call of Duty and I, I know what you mean about it being like i feel like they've really tapped into the like what what you get rewards from so the way they'll tell you you've got to kill the way that like various notifications pop up is very like like you wouldn't be able to go to sleep after playing for an hour very anxiety inducing yeah but horrible like i think the amount of time you bring up games i think you should just just get an xbox and do it properly like just get yourself the basic the basic xbox and get some some proper like 4k games I would pay and, to watch you stream Warzone on Twitch. Just shit talking people on it. I just <laughs> bet, I bet you'd be really good at it. <laughs> it. I think the reason I keep it at arm's length is because I know that I I would get addicted to it. Right. And whereas, uh, the, so have you heard of Ways? I know Video yes. Guy Dean likes Ways. Yes. Which is a a map app. No, like it's a, it's a it's an advertising platform that is masquerading as a map. It's masquerading as a map. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's terrible. Like it's been it's... designed by Satan himself, like Prince of Darkness. Like it's just this, like it's like gamified. So you you'll drive two miles and it'll be like, "Bing, you have driven two miles successfully. You've gained ten ways points. Like you've oh, driven God. past three petrol stations." Like, I don't care. Just tell me where I but need to go. It also tries. It it'll have a banner pop down from the top and say, "There's a Starbucks en route. Do you want a coffee?" press here to detour to this Starbucks and presumably like while you're driving. Yes. Driving. Yeah. Wild man. That's that. <laughs> there is, there are certain apps that I think should be Faraday caged from <laughs> advertising and map apps are absolutely one of them. They need to be sacred, don't they? Correct. Mm. Correct. Right. We'll do one more and then we'll do a little bit of uh, a little bit of Netflix. Some telly. Um, what have I got? I've got some unbelievable. One. I'm going to keep that for the next time. Here's one that I learned the other day. Uh, push your tongue against the roof of your mouth to stop you from sneezing. Ooh. So I've always wondered how you can stop yourself from sneezing in a robust way. Uh, and I was testing this out because I tweaked my back a couple of days ago and I didn't want to sneeze too hard because it would make <coughs> my back hurt. Uh, and it's- I remember reading this a long time ago. And uh, yeah, it works. So you just have to push really, really hard against the roof of your mouth. <laughs> Completely kills the desire to sneeze. It's, it's the the plight of someone who's had back problems that no one else will ever understand. Is you feel a sneeze coming, you're like, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> or you try. Well, the other thing, if you can't stop it, is you try and position yourself like into something <laughs> with your head on a wall. You're like, right, I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, but tongue against roof of your mouth. Stops you from sneezing. The time, Brilliant. the worst time for me is when I'm like walking upstairs with a coffee. Oh. And I feel the sneeze coming. And you, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you, your head goes down and the cup goes up, <laughs> and you're trying to like <laughs> you try catch like it in mid. It. <laughs> it's it's a problem that's worse for you because you're so fast twitch and your your top end strength is so high that like what was it you said the other day? Um, you. Oh, you were you were coughing or being sick, and you had real doms from it. Uh, certainly, if I'm like if I'm th- if I have a throw up, so like normally if I'm if I've had too much to drink, and I'm 
went silly and I end up spending like the morning throwing up for a long period of time, that is doms for days. Because there's just so much ab that's being the thing. The, the worst thing is when I like when it's slippy and I slip on ice that that's fine. It's the correction. <laughs> so I'll like violently correct in the other way and I'll like pull an oblique or like or end up actually falling over because of the correction. <laughs> so if I'd just done nothing, I'd have slipped a bit and it would have been fine. But they're like, and then like, that's it. I'm on, I'm on the side. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, what have we all been watching recently? What's been good? So I'll, I'll go then, shall I? Um, the do you remember when we were at yours chris and we watched a program about theranos yes elizabeth holmes so there is a series a dramatized series out about that same story called the dropout and it is really good really really good and it's very interesting as well having like seen the documentary like seeing the real story and then see the the dramatization of it. That so Elizabeth Holmes story crazy. is yeah, it's crazy. been and there's been a ton of different good ones. Jake Tran on YouTube's done a couple of good ones. Amazon Prime had that good documentary, but it's the same as the WeWork thing. We work the WeWork story, which has just had Jared Leto, I think, as mm -hmm. the uh, what's it called, like We We Fail, I think, or we, like We. I can't remember. I know like what that. you mean. Yeah, yeah, that had been picked up by tons and tons of YouTubers first. Right. And that story, and you've watched that, and now you get to see Jared Leto play the role of Adam, whatever his face is, the dude that's sunning himself on an island with half a billion of I watched bank's money. that, um, like the documentary about that on the plane on the way back from San Francisco, like the, the true, like the documentary version like, of, it, of what actually happened. I had no idea. Wild, isn't it? Insane. And these WeWorks are still all over the place, just I know. losing money. Yeah. Made a, made a, a a landlord, like a real estate company masquerading as a tech company. Yeah. And then exited. Fair play. The dropout. Okay, cool. Uh, Yusuf, mm. have you watched anything from this century? I have, actually. Okay. So I think I think these are recommendations from you guys last time, but oh, no. Nine Perfect Strangers. Three Perfect Strangers. It's nine or 12. It's about like a, a retreat so you're, where they... Do you, are you the, the Nicole Kidman thing? Yeah. Oh, no. It's different to what... Is it? Yeah, it, it's an, an Amazon film. Prime original, I think. Yeah, there, there is an old film called Something Perfect Strangers, and it's about a, like a courtroom. But what was the one about the three the triplets that got separated at birth? Oh, uh, I think that's called Three Perfect Strangers. Yes, I think they just coming. I mean, that, that was excellent as well. Okay, so what's um, what are you watching? So I'm currently watching Succession from Johnny's recommendation. Unbelievable! Nice. I finished it. Unbelievable! Yeah, three seasons, so nailed it. So good. It's yeah, it, it is good. I'm I'm still early-ish in it, but um, just the soundtrack. Yeah, great soundtrack. It's yeah. not what I expected. Um, but then also the the guy from there is in the Big Short, and yes, I'm, he is. I'm watching. It's the that same again. director. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's so um, slick, like the writing, the dialogue, the characters. Who's your favorite character in it? The guy who abuses furniture. Roman. Roman, it's got to Roman. be Roman. He's, he's just an absolute just... like sexual deviant, and just like the way he he just always like doesn't sit on furniture properly, and he's got weird hair, and I I feel like so it at the minute they're just building the characters, and I can just feel like it's all gonna getting worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. I really like Tom. I just think <laughs> his, the way he deals with situations that he's put in, like especially in like this the the latter uh, seasons, you stuff. He'll, he he's so funny. His it's, reaction to like really up. serious things. Yeah. Well, you, uh, okay. this is something that you have as a, what do you say, like a weakness or a vulnerability. You're very um, seduced by a guy that just deals with an ass fucking from life and just <laughs> continues moving through it. That's <laughs> like why you like Ozark. thingy in Ozark. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So like, um, what's it, Mar Marty Bird in Ozark. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, he just stays so analytical and calm. But you're absolutely right. I didn't even know that about myself. Malcolm, is it Malcolm Tucker in? The Malcolm thing of Tucker it? does not stay cool at all. He loses <laughs> his shit all the time. Yeah. Um, so I watched Tinder Swindle is a little bit old now, I guess. Um, but Bad Vegan, which was like, oh, it's the Tinder Swindler of the other thing, and Chris D'Elia had the best take on both of those. Tinder Swindler, m maybe you go, oh, well, the guy was being sort of quite. 
manipulative and stuff like that. But then Bad Vegan, if anybody's watched that, it's just a woman who's been this guy who slowly got fatter throughout the entire series, managed to get her to send him two and a half million dollars, promised her that he was going to be able to keep his keep her dog alive for the rest of time, said that he was like some holy warrior fighting a war between immortal people. And Dalia fucking nailed it. And he's like, why don't we just cancel naming all of these shows and just create a series called Gullible Bitches? Because that's <laughs> all that it's about. It's just about who at what point do you say you are accountable for the fact that you thought your dog was going to live forever and you transferred someone 2.5 million it's it's amazing that they had 2.5 million like because they got to the stage in their life where they've got oh no she's kept million. on taking loans out the stuff oh, the people God. from her like super successful vegan restaurant weren't being paid uh and then he managed to get himself written into the directorship ownership thing and then she was written off and this is all oh, while wow. they're still in a relationship then he gets in contact with her mother and gets her mother to send him like a few hundred thousand as well separately so this guy's obviously a skilled manipulator but gullible bitches so speaking of which i've been listening to a true crime podcast series it's a seven part series called sweet bobby and it's it could be in that that series it's basically someone who gets catfished but catfished so hard like right up the wazoo like it's not even it, it it's just ridiculous and and as you as you're listening to it each episode you're like oh my god this is even more ridiculous than i could have anticipated um each episode is like half an hour very good piece of journalism worth worth having a, a listen to yeah um also a, a bit of a life hack fail because i i've now started in my list of recommended tv shows and things that people send me i've started putting the name of the person who recommended it so that they're accountable and i know how to come back to them and say it was good or bad but i didn't specify whether it was a tv series or a film so some i had the word safe recommended and i don't know if it's the film safe with jason statham or mm. the series safe with the guy who played dexter it'll be the latter it'll so be I watched me both. recommend oh. <laughs> <laughs> which one was better i liked the film because i was quite ill at the time i had just fevers and it was just like a nice like switch your brain off to jason statham beating up some russians um <laughs> but the the series was uh it felt like i was just being played because it was just Netflix, like opening up a bunch of like red herrings and open loops, and mm. oh, what about this mystery? Oh, what about the him? Or the, maybe the butler did it, and then you get to the end, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like the series then. Not a fan. No, I felt like I was you being being manipulated. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, right, we'll do one more round. Johnny, you got anything else that you've been watching? Have time? I have I mentioned the Alpinist? before I'm, i don't think i will have done i might have mentioned it to you both individually but not mm. on a life hacks episode is that fair yeah, to say you did mention it individually so the alpinist is similar to free solo you both seen free solo yes yeah total psychopath yeah so this, this this is even this is even more hard hitting for lots of various reasons so it opens with uh alex honnell on tim ferris's podcast and Tim Ferriss saying, who are you most impressed by at the moment? And he says, oh, there's this guy who's insane. Who, and then it like cuts and then the, then the film starts. And it's all about this guy who basically does free solo, but in like ice with ice picks up mountains that it's not rock a lot of the time. And sometimes you'll go from ice to stone climbing back to ice again. And uh, it has a sad ending. So... Be prepared for the sad ending. What a, I mean, a hell of a film. Hell of a film. Very, uh, but quite like, you don't like come away from it feeling good. Uplifted. But it's very interesting. Yeah. The Alpinist. Okay, cool. I've, I've just. I've got one more if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, you, I've, Chris. I've just spent a fair bit of time trying to spell the word Alpinist. Uh, <laughs> and before I ended up on the correct spelling, I've actually gone to Alpen, like the breakfast the, the cereal. cereal. Like as if there was a man who was a specialist in Alpen. In Alpen. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that. And that's Alpen's surprisingly not mentioned throughout the entire film. Surprising. Okay, uh, Seth. A film called Boiling Point with the, who's that Liverpool actor? So Did I've you... actually, I've got a bone to pick with you about this, but I'll let you, uh, oh, I'll let you no. say your piece. Okay. It's Chris the, will enjoy he, this. He's a 
he's an actor who's from Liverpool. He just plays the typical like Liverpool guy. Like oh, what? Ah, oh, what is he called? Stephen Graham. Stephen Graham. Thank you. Yeah, he's every so, scouser in every film. Stephen Graham. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. So it's a film about a restaurant kitchen that's on opening night, and they get visited by food standards agency and they get downgraded from a five to a three and then they have the opening night and there's someone with an allergy and then the, the waitress comes and he's like right this person's got an allergy table 14 or oh, is it on the system no why is it not on the system guys if you, if you have an allergy it needs to be on the system right okay what, what's the allergy to and it's just like very stressful and it's all filmed in one shot and that adds to the stress especially for you and i for, for, for especially for us because we we are we see behind the fourth wall we we recognize how much could go wrong in a production and so it's entirely like just handheld camera, 90 minutes, all done You're in one me. shot. The whole thing's in one shot. You feel stressed yeah. for the like cameraman and the sound man. And, oh my God. And like you get to the end and you just feel like you've done a, a busy shift in the restaurant. I got stressed Brilliant. with, what was it? Uh, 1914? 19, oh yeah, you mentioned this. 17. 1917, sorry. It was shot in uh, like five shots. The entire movie was done in... Huge, huge, huge long sequences. Nineteen seventeen. It's World War One, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah nineteen seventeen. Yeah. Um, what's yeah. your What's your bone to pick with Boiling Point, Johnny? So, um, Yusuf recommended the film. It came onto whatever it was on Netflix, Amazon Prime, whatever. And I was like saying to Becca, like, oh, you know, Yusuf very rarely re- rec- recommends films. It's got oh, Stephen Graham in. It gets really good ratings. We should watch it. So we're watching it. It is really good. And as Yusuf alluded to, about a third of the way in a lady comes into the restaurant and says like, oh, I've got an allergy. I was like, <laughs> interesting that you just recommended that. I hope nothing goes wrong. Um, and they accidentally put nuts in her food and she ends up being taken away from the hospital in an ambulance. And I thought like, is she sort of trying to like say something to me with this? Like, I think it's a low key threat against your life. Is that, like, <laughs> it's, it's just because she didn't, do the hand thing. <laughs> there we are. Luckily, we are. I think it was walnut. So we would have got out. Pine been, nuts. Are you okay, okay with pine nuts? I don't think they're a nut. That's the thing, isn't it? But then peanuts are a legume. Peas. So How are you with peas? Peas are fine. Okay. Yep. Does peas anyone have an allergy to peas? I would assume so. Yeah. yeah I would someone's so. got an allergy to everything. The, the the weirdest question you get asked when you say I have an al- an allergy is how serious is the allergy? I would like to know what they intend to do with that piece of information. So yeah, it it seems weird for the restaurant staff to ask that because like well you're mm. not going to be treating it anyway. Like the, the, I think it's reasonable for a doctor to ask that because that determines the algorithm but, of treatment. But by that, that by that point, I'm like it doesn't matter, does it? Because I've I've reacted. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, do, do you give him Pyroton or do you give him a drug? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But you're right, like, for a, for a restaurant like, stuff, either, like, well, what are you going to do if, if it is yeah, severe? Either there's nuts not? in the food or there's not nuts in the food. <laughs> like, let's just get clear on that fact. <laughs> you, let, you let me worry about how severe my allergy is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of an insult, isn't it, as a question? Yeah. I never thought like, about no, it like that. I don't mean, like, I get a bit of a dicky tummy if I eat nuts. Like, I, I mean I have. It's not a taste preference. <laughs> It's a serious medical condition. I need to hold your hand while I'm talking about it. Yeah. Thank you. Look, we've done it, gentlemen. Thank you very much. If people want to get some macros or get help with starting their online business, where should they go? Propinfitness.com forward slash calculator if you want some macros. If you want to learn how we run Propin Fitness and how to build an online business, it's propinfitness.com forward slash modern wisdom. Thank you. Gentlemen, I appreciate you. I will see you soon. I miss you both. Bye. What's happening, people? Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that episode, then press here for a selection of the best clips from the podcast over the last few weeks. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.